today I'm going to show you how I took this photo from this and turn it into this with Lightroom, just better for Lightroom and Photoshop, right after the intro. <laughs> Hey, what's going on YouTube? My name is Mo, and on this channel, I show you how to take awesome car shots and how to process them in Adobe Lightroom and Photoshop. So if you're new around here, please consider subscribing and don't forget to hit and smash the like button because that's the only way you can support this awesome channel. So we're going to do one thing that is different in this video. By the end of the video, I'm gonna go back to my previous video and answer the questions that you might have, including this shot of the Porsche. Someone asked me how I shot it. So I'm going to explain and walk you through it because I actually just have lost the raw file, but I'm going to, I edit it that, of course, uh, in, in Photoshop and Lightroom. All right, so let's have a look at the original shot, which is not definitely this, and actually this one, I'll say that before, and this is the after. It's a bit over or underexposed, and you can see uh, from my basic settings, I did increase the exposure and I did pump up the shadows, the whites and brought back the blacks just to add the contrast um, to back to the photo. All right, that's it in Lightroom. Let's go to Photoshop. All right, so first things first, as you know, if you've been following along, cleaning up is the first process and I didn't want to do a lot of cleanup I just was bothered with this plastic cup over here the leaf and the backs over there and um, there you go and I most likely use this stamp or clone stamp tool to remove these now for the next one two three four five six layers these are all uh, ambient and environment kind of lighting that I added gradually and that's why I didn't do everything on just one single layer because that will just give me more flexibility in terms of controlling each and every layer. Also, I didn't use uh, a several blending mode like, like normal, overlay and screen. Alright, so let's have a look at the first one. And the first one is just basic. Um, I used a brush tool and it was around mm, kind of this color with a very, very subtle uh, overflow or opacity. And I brushed around the area. So let's have a look at the before. After, great. I did add a blend, um, sorry, blend F, yep, layer style, just to um, exclude the darker shadows or darker tones within the car. Um, yeah, that's about it for this layer. Next, it was set onto an overlay and that just intensified the effect. Now, I'm not very happy with this, but I'll show you how I um, counter that in a bit. Um, this was set to overlay. I did stroke a few brushes here and there. So let's have a look at the before, after, kaboom, that's it. Also, it's worth to mention that I did get a cut out of the car, um, which I'm going to use later on. I just trace around with the pen tool and I did make a cut out. Great. Next, I have the blending mode set to screen. And I just wanted to add this hazy kind of sun rays uh, around the environment of the car. I did the same thing over here with the screen. And it's very subtle, but you will notice it over here. If you look carefully and closely there, and I did use the blend F to remove it from the shadows, like so. Again, once again, it's a screen and, and a stroke of the brush. This time the opacity at 16%, here at 36% previously. Um, again, like I said, that's why I had it on different layers. I can control each layer separately. And finally, um, this was a mistake. Um, I need to erase that. Let me just remove this. Oops. Wrong layer. And there you go. Yep. So let's have a look at the before and after. And it's only affecting, it should have just been affecting this area of the photo. Anything below it. And just removed it. 
that's it. So if I would put this in one group, let's have a look at the before, after, before, after, great. Now if I add the cut out of the car, it looks better of course, but you feel that the car doesn't fit the environment because the white balance on the car is quite different. Now you can again mitigate this by either adding a color balance on top of the car or adding um, another layer that you can control on top of that cutout and I've set it to um, a blending mode of screen and opacity of 59. I also added a mask to control the spell of the effect. Great. Now, I looked at the photo, it was like, hmm, with all this, you know, cool lighting effects that I added, it was missing a shadow. And this is how I create shadow. I add a curve, drop down the, um, Get the curve down just to bring the shadows down and then add a mask create this shadow most likely I did add a blur to blur the edges and I did add a mask to um, control the intensity of this towards the end of the shadows just to give it more realistic look right great now one thing I did not like about this shot is the Sun it just didn't fit. I don't like it. And um, I did use an overlay from the overlay pack that we talked about in the last video. And I added it over there. That's great. But now that I look at it, it's a bit too much. And I think around 78% looks better because the center of the sun should always look white and not yellow or orange or um, especially when it's yeah it's not sunset so um, it most probably uh, be white at the center mm, I hope that makes sense guys yeah well mm. all right moving forward guys <laughs> once I was happy with the look and feel of the car I did create um, a new stamp visible layer and added a camera raw filter I did use a smart filter and that allows me to go back and edit the filter and in this case actually show it to you guys all right let me show you what I've done in camera raw I did warm up the shot just a bit I did play with the whites just to bring the details on the car the highlights on the car and that's it for the basics I did use the um, color grading um, I added some yellows in the midtone just to again intensify the look and feel of what I'm trying to achieve Use the color mixer and played around with the saturation with that level. And um, I did actually um, bring the blue hue primary. I just wanted to fix a color cast that I didn't like. I don't know if you can see it. It's very minimal, by the way. You barely can see it. Now, if you notice, I didn't add any clarity to the shot because. If I added clarity to the entire shot, it will affect the entire shot. That means all this haze, all these light rays will kind of um, look odd with um, the clarity effect. So I did add a basic adjustment and uh, one that is sitting on top of the car and the ground in front of it. And uh, let's select it. Where is it? There it is. There it is. Okay, so clarity a bit of a texture and um, I did add some noise reduction because we've brightened up the shot a lot and that creates a bit of artifacts and noise now the other basic um, or local adjustment uh, is this side and you can see I just dehazed it I actually dropped the dehaze just to give it a bit of hazy look over here now last but not least, I used a graduated filter or gradual filter to darken up this side of the shot and this side and that's it. Just to bring more, you know, to bring the eye or draw the eyes towards the car. And we have a nice contrast, highlights here, darker shadows here, and yep, that's it in camera. So now you're wondering what are these two layers all about, right? So let me zoom in. And uh, why is it not zooming in? 
zoom in. Maybe. All right. Let's zoom in further. Now, uh, if you look closely, I did not do a great job with the cutout of the car. And I was done with the edit. So, um, let me show you how I actually fixed this with the clone stamp tool. So, this is the before, and this is the after. I just used the clone stamp tool to fix my uh, sloppy work. And um, I did the same over here. There you go. Fixed. Done. Awesome. All right, we're done with this edit. Now let's jump to the uh, previous video to answer your questions. All right, as promised, I'm going back to the previous video and I'm going to answer the questions or the comments, address the comments that you might have. And uh, I see a lot of people like Andre, um, Blue One and the others um, um, congratulating me on you know coming back. Thank you guys, I've always been around. I know I haven't uploaded any video in a while, but you know, um, I try my best to actually create videos for you guys. So I might be on and off every now and then, but hey, I'm always around. Thank you so much for welcoming me back though. So we have a Drift Course over here. Can you make a video on how you edited the GT3 RS in the intro? And as much as I would love to, I did lose <laughs> the raw file. This is like, shot a long time ago and I'm not sure where the raw files are but I can explain the shot overall and I think I did it in one of my live streams anyway um, I remember on that day it was pretty sunny it was a very harsh sunlight and uh, we were looking at, at a spot that would bounce off the light so we had two walls uh, a wall over here a wall over there and of course it was too bright um, where the sun was but this was in the shade technically it was just bouncing off the light now of course um, when I edited this I did adjust the um, the color or uh, the tone the white balance because whatever reflected here uh, it reflected the colors of these walls as well now in terms of the edit itself I did a bit of cleanup around here I left these here intentionally because we had a tree we had to I had to leave that over there just wanted that look um, so yeah I did a bit of cleanup now on the car itself I did a lot of dodging and burning and if you've been following my channel um, I did show that a lot of times and you would notice this over here you know on the areas uh, of the wheels I did um, dodge over here and then burn over there burn over here burn over here burn burn dodge um dodge dodge burn on the edges and i did add a bit of clarity as well to these to make them pop you can see the details the sharpness i added a bit of sharpening as well i did a bit of uh, again dodging over here burning over there burn dodge i just wanted to bring the details of the car i did spend a lot of time dodging and burning and i added overall clarity um if you notice i did darken the ground but it wasn't too much so just leading towards the car over there and i did add a bit of um, sun flare over here too again that will complement the contrast and the look and feel of the photo and the way your eyes are drawn to the shot of the car now one one thing as well what is very important thing is the focal length of this shot it wasn't shot at 24 certainly this is perhaps I don't know uh, I think I mentioned that before uh, 40 50 plus I believe it was somewhere between 70 plus looking at this photo 60 70 plus minimum and i did do a bit of color grading you can see the shadows are a bit blue the highlights are um and the highlights are yellow or orange yep that's it for the gt3 rs i hope that it's helpful um again uh, thank you so much i'm back i hope i can keep it consistent uh, the trick here is to go out and shoot more shots or photos now I do have a set that I'm working on and hopefully I'll uh, share that with you 
Now again, uh, thanks. Um, thank you for your comment. I did post the overlay, so uh, if anyone is interested, check out the link over here. I did post the overlays. Um, I also posted the song overall. Thank you all for your comments. That's what actually encourages me to come back and um, you know create all these tutorials for you guys. I'm sorry that the Udemy fronts um, are not allowing my discount codes for you, um, uh, but um, I hope it works out for you in the future. I'll continue posting these uh, discount codes. All in all, guys, uh, thank you so much for tuning in. Now, if you have any questions, please leave me a comment in the comment section below. Don't forget to like and smash the button and subscribe to my YouTube channel. And I'll be seeing you in the next video.